Policemen women of Reddit, what is the most horrifying situation you've been called to? Got a call for a missing child, got to the home to find the mother highly distressed, and not sure what to do. I called in everyone to first search the home and property. I decided to search the backyard since it was a large wooded lot with no visible fence. After about 10 minutes I found the boy. He was caught on an old chain link fence in the woods that was blocked by a bunch of trees, so you couldn't see it from the house. He had basically gotten strangled to death on the fence. He must have been climbing on it fell and got his hooded sweatshirt caught on it the worst part for me was having to call it in on the radio knowing the mother might hear it inside from one of the other officers radio not a cop but i worked in mortuary transportation so running into cops was normal worst scene i ever worked was when a guy roughly 6 4 feet 280 pounds uped and killed a two-year-old girl by simply throwing her into nearly through a wall in the home he then proceeded to go out back in a small shed and blow his head off with a shotgun. The atmosphere created by the scene hardly seemed real, having the scene of pure innocence destroyed inside the house and the grisly mess of the shed outside was weird. Just seemed like a movie. My mother was police officer in the UK in the 80s but was forced to retire after she broke her back in accident. She once told me about a time she had to investigate a domestic disturbance. A couple had gotten into an argument and when the police arrived, the husband was lying in the hallway moaning with a screwdriver sticking out of his ear. Turns out the wife had discovered he was cheating, stabbed him in the ear with a screwdriver and subsequently tried to scramble his brains with it. That one sticks with me. Not me but a friend of my parents used to be an ambulance driver. One night he gets a call for a car accident. A drunk driver crashed its car. Upon arrival. They start checking everyone only to find the two guys in the front are dead. Trying to get to the back seat, he notices one of the passengers, two girls, is his daughter, who is also dead. He took some time off, went back to work a couple of months later but couldn't bring himself to drive an ambulance anymore. So he works in the air for a couple of years. He loved driving the ambulance so after 4 or 5 years, he requests to be one again. Second day on the job. They get a call for a car crash so he drives over there and immediately recognizes his own son's car, who smashed the front into a tree. Kid was dead on impact. When he saw what was left of his son, the guy broke down completely. Shortly after this, he was put in a mental hospital by his wife and remaining daughter, and has been there ever since. Not me but my dad has been an officer for 18 years. Three years ago he worked a case where a boyfriend had beaten a two year old to near death. My dad was first to the house and sat there with the baby and it died a few minutes before the ambulance got there. My dad took a short leave after that one. Not a cop, but a former medic. We responded to a car wreck in which an SUV had run off the road and into a ditch at high speed causing the vehicle to flip end over end several times. There was a family of four in the car. The father, driver, was unbelted and was ejected through the windshield after which the vehicle landed on him before continuing to flip. Surmise this due to his location and his injuries. He was dead on the scene when we arrived. The mother was in the passenger seat and she was belted. But the belt somehow malfunctioned, we think. And she was thrown forward far enough for the windshield was pushed back far enough for her head to hit the windshield and put a hole in it. She was alive when we arrived, but barely. The vehicle was severely mangled and we were unable to extricate her quickly. We had to work a trauma code on her while she was still in the seat. Intubation, IV lines, etc. By the time the rescue squad could get the vehicle access to remove her, she had been without a pulse for nearly 10 minutes. The second arriving unit continued CPR on her during transport to the air, but she was declared dead shortly after arriving at the hospital. The back seat contained two children. My recollection is that there was a girl of about 12 years of age and boy who was about 8. They were both properly restrained and other than obvious scrapes and bruises, neither appeared seriously injured. Their vitals were in good shape and other than being in shock, they seemed to have appropriate levels of consciousness. Because of the difficulty getting into the vehicle, they were trapped but they could see all of our efforts to resuscitate their mother. Because of her condition compared to theirs, the main effort of extrication was to get the mother out first. The children were safely removed a bit after she had been removed and transported. They were taken to the same as the mother, we transported the girl in our ambulance. 
Once back at the air, the two children were thoroughly checked by the physicians and by radiology for any internal injuries or anything we may have missed. Neither had anything significant. What stuck with me the most was what I saw and learned as we were restocking our unit to go back on the road. One of the cops had let us know that the family was from out of town, several hours away, and had been on vacation. The closest family could not get down to be with the children for at least two hours. Soon after learning that, I was leaving the air and I looked into the room where the children had been put after their trip to radiology. They were both on the same bed and the girl had her arms wrapped around her little brother. Both had thousand yard stares. I don't know if or how anyone had told them about their parents, but you could tell by the looks on their faces that they knew. I will never forget that day. I often wonder how those kids turned out and how difficult it must have been for them. Suicide in progress. Man cut his throat and both forearms. He was bleeding a lot, but walking around and talking to us. The cuts were all deep, but he survived. Not sure if I'll get those images out of my head. I have been in love for a long time. I have dealt with some of the worst people in our society you can imagine and I have had the pleasure of coming across some of the nicest most giving people as well. What you are going to read below may not be the worst thing you have ever read, but for me it is what sticks in my head the most. What gives me nightmares on a regular basis. To talk about this helps for a bit, so when I see these questions pop up, I like to share this story. A family of 5 that burned to death in their SUV. They were traveling down the interstate when a vehicle going the opposite direction crossed the median T-boning them, which smashed them into the car that was on their right side as they were passing. This caused their vehicle to engulf in flames. No way out except the back hatch, as their left doors were crushed from the guy who crossed the median and their right side crushed from the car they were trying to pass. Driver, dad, died on impact. Mom died from smoke inhalation. Would most have likely lived had she been able to get out. Oldest daughter and youngest daughter were found in the hatch area of the SUV, with the oldest daughter's hand on the release. Both daughters died from smoke inhalation. Mom was found as if she had just aided in getting youngest daughter in the hatch area of the SUV. Son sitting up front died from smoke inhalation but most likely would have died anyways due to blunt force trauma burns. This may not be the most screwed up thing I have had to deal with, but it is for sure the most traumatizing thing that I hopefully never have to see again. I was really messed up for a while after that. This family was on their way to the local university to see their son that they hadn't seen in a few months. They were 2 miles from their exit. I volunteered to go with a chaplain and give the notice. This kid lost his whole family in a split second. He said that the last thing he said to his mom was don't come down here. None of my friend's family visits them and you will just embarrass me. He was devastated. After all these years I still keep in constant contact with him and he is practically another son to our family. Uh, folks, your life or family's life can be over in a blink of a second. No matter the fight etc. Always let them know you love them. Hug them. Kiss them. Embrace them. I have seen it too much. You just never know when that might be the last time you see them or they see you. Don't take them for granted. I went to report of a guy who had up head his own mother. Carers noticed something was wrong while they were bathing and dressing her. Mother was 99 years old and bedridden. She could not speak due to her age. We arranged for a doctor to take forensic samples from her. As she was bedridden it must have been another horrific experience for her to be violated in her own bedroom but she was too frail to move. She was terrified. Did our best to comfort her but what can you say to someone who has had their only child do that to them? My only hope is that she was too out of it to know what was going on fully. However her eyes told me she did. Not a blood and gore story but it haunts me. CPS dropped the case before court as she died as she could not give evidence. She was mute anyway. And he walked free. Not a cop. Dad was for 25 years. Here are the three stories he tells the most when people ask him. His first call as a deputy was to a dead body shooting. He was still a trainee so B was basically there to observe. They get there and it's a huge family gathering BBQ. And they find the body on the lawn next door. They interview people at the party and find out that him and his brother, both live there, got into an argument. His brother pulled out a gun and shot it into the ground. The bullet hit a hidden rock and ricocheted up into his brother's pelvis. It cut a major artery and he bled to death running. His brother was an unconsolable mess. 
he had chased him trying to help but said that his brother looked terrified and that was how he would always remember him. Second story, he is driving around Compton and sees a car idling near a stop sign and gets out to see what's happening. As he walks up to the car he sees all the windows are covered in blood and there is a guy in the driver's seat. He opens the door and the driver is naked, covered head to toe in blood, and holding a large pair of fabricate sheets. He asks the guy if he is okay, and he starts telling my dad that he couldn't stop the buzzing noise so he cut off his ears. He was high as frick on PCP. So my dad asks him to get out and gets an ambulance and they take him in. Coincidentally he says people on PCP are super easy to deal with you just had to move slowly and speak calmly. People speedballing. H and coke mixed, were the ones who fought until tendons tore away from the bone. The worst, turn back now if you have a weak stomach. He worked crimes against children as a detective for 2 years but asked for a transfer after he responded murder of an infant. The father had grabbed the baby by the ankles and smashes them back and forth against the corner of the wall until ever bone was broken. A guy wasn't on drugs or anything just in butthole to his core. This is a story I was told by a police lieutenant I interviewed for a local paper. Halloween in a college town. They get a call to break up a fight in the front yard of a frat house. Police get there and push through the crowd. Just in time to see one of the kids push the other into the street. Where he's immediately hit by a speeding truck. LT said the kid basically exploded and it was the goriest scene he'd even witnessed. Not me but my cousin got called out to a suicide. A man had taken an overdose 3 or 4 days before it was reported, and had gone to bed with his electric blanket on. Apparently when they had to pick him up out of bed all his insides just came out of his back, like the whole back of him just collapsed. Not police myself but the driver for our company used to be a local police sergeant. He was driving me to the airport and started telling me about a suicide he had to attend. He used to do this on the early morning drives when you couldn't escape. It was a local farmer and the guy had shot himself in the head with a shotgun. This in itself didn't get to him. He had seen lots of death and suicide and was able to detach. But as he was examining the scene he noticed almost two cigarette packs worth of butts on the ground beside where the guy was. He started to think about the man sitting there in the shed for hours, with the gun, smoking and thinking about killing himself and couldn't get the image out of his head. He became fixated on those final moments and how low the guy must have felt and ended up thinking about it all the time. He eventually had to go to counseling because he was randomly crying and started to get really depressed. UK. Got a call to say that a guy had been arrested in the early hours for going equipped for theft and his mother had been into the station to ask about the kids. What kids? He didn't mention kids. I go to the house and shout through the letterbox. No reply. Shout again and there's a 3 year old kid comes to the door. He doesn't have a key and I ask if he is alone. No. His 18 month old brother is in there with him. 3. And 18 month old kids. Alone in a house. Virtually all night. We use a big red magic key to break the door down and get inside. Oh. My. God. I'm still haunted by the squalor these kids lived in. Dirty nappies diapers everywhere. Takeaway cartons. Dirty clothes just everywhere. 18 month old has filled his nappy that much it's coming up his back. We get grandmother to come and collect them. As we do I'm looking for a cup to get them a drink and bread for toast, as they've not eaten. No cups without mold growing and nothing except tin beans. I couldn't even get them a drink of water without risking their health. We got a bottle of water from a nearby shop. We got the kids away and do a sweep of the house. Those poor kids. They shared a single bed. The bathroom hadn't been cleaned in years. Go to dad's bedroom. Cannabis grow set up in a small tent. This could have set on fire at any point and those kids would have perished. We get all of that cleared up and bagged up as evidence. I go through the house switching off electric appliances and get to his computer which is running. I move the mouse to shut down and his desktop is a picture of young, 12-13 years old, girl, naked. I've never been so disgusted and angry at one man and the way he could live like that, let alone make his kids live in that environment. I am not a cop, but the man I work for is a retired police officer. One day that will always stand out to him was when he got a call to go to a house when it sounded like gunshots went off. He came to the scene and entered the house. What he found was a man who he blew his own head off with a 12 gauge. That was horrific to him, but he later found in the house, the man's children with holes in their back, 
as well as the man's wife with a hole in her back. The man killed his family and himself. He was stunned by it. The chief of police gave him the rest of the day off. Obligatory not me but my dad was a cop. He was the first responder to a grisly accident where a young girl speeding had struck four girls and flung them very far. Two of the girls were DOA and when my dad arrived, he saw that my sister was one of the girls hit. My sister survived, but was badly injured. He was on the force for 25 years and saw a lot of gruesome crap, but he still says that was the worst day he had in his career. Not my story but my dad is a fireman. His first day they had to go to a call about a suicide. The lady was threatening to light her house on fire. When he finally went into the house with some other guys they went to the top floor where she was standing in the middle of the room, doused in gasoline. She lit herself on fire and the flames swarmed her immediately. They saved her life but her body was pretty fricked up. Turns out she did it all because her boyfriend broke up with her. Second hand account. But worth telling, I was in 11th grade and a local lady came to talk to our school about the dangers of drunk driving. To us kids who thought we already knew how bad drunk driving was, it sounded like this was a waste of time. The woman told us that her daughter had a flat tire and was calling her dad for help while pulled over on the side of the road. While talking to her dad, the phone suddenly went silent. A drunk driver had swerved his 18-wheeler off the road and hit her. The worst part? He hit her so hard that her head was found more than 200 yards away from her body. I sobbed like a baby. The assembly ended and we went to our next class, but I just couldn't stop crying. I left the room and walked back to the assembly hall where I found the woman sitting in the dimly lit auditorium, packing away her stuff. I walked up to her, hugged her, and sobbed for a good 10 minutes. She cried. I cried. We just sat there crying. She told me that if only one person was convinced not to ever drive drunk, that speaking about her experience was worth it. From that day on, she came to every home football game I played for the rest of my high school experience. She wore my number, sat with my parents, and cheered us on. Win or lose, she always gave me a big hug at the end of each game. To this day, I never have, and never will, drive after drinking. Not me, but the absolute worst story I have ever heard, and saw pictures of was one my instructor in the police academy told us. He just had us huddle in close and told us want to hear the worst thing about our jobs. He was, still is, a sheriff's deputy and was responding to a car accident where we live, if a deputy is the first one on scene, that means the accident was way out in the middle of nowhere, and this one was, he said it took him a while to find it because the two cars involved had hit head on and their headlights were out, finally he saw a guy covered in blood waving him down, it was the driver of the car that caused the accident, a black Tahoe, the driver had been drinking, and had his whole family in the car, he said he was looking for his daughter, his girlfriend and two other kids had been strapped in and had minor injuries. The driver of the other car, who coincidentally, as they found out later was also drunk, had a pretty bad gash, but was okay. But he and the Tahoe's driver couldn't find the oldest daughter, so the deputy, who was the only responder at the time began searching. He was searching close to the wreck, but found nothing. He told us that finally the wind died down and we could hear what sounded like a kitten in a blender. It was the daughter. She was asleep in the car unseat belted and the accident launched her out of the car, off to the side of the road, and out into a field. She landed in barbed wire. There was a barbed wire fence on the property next to the accident and she went straight into it. Deputy took out his multi-tool with wire cutters and each time he cut a piece of the barbed wire, the others would just get tighter. He got her out just as the fireman and first ambulance got there, and he ran with her in his arms to get her to them. Somewhere in the 30 or so feet he had to run, she died. You've been visited by swining thick boy. Like and comment swing well thick boy and you'll be blessed with many thick woofers in your life. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.